Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday, April 12th. Here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do our daily lectionary text for today and say a little prayer about it and talk about it a little bit. But we are a little bit under the gun today, time-wise, because life continues. But nonetheless, happy to be here with you again today, Natalie. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Gracious Lord, we are thankful to you and uh, in the midst of busy lives with lots of responsibilities we do want to uh, slow down and take the time to read your word and to listen to what you would say to us today uh, let us be attentive lord that our ears be open let our hearts and minds be soft uh, and moldable as we are the clay and you are the potter we thank you lord for your word to us and we ask that um that you would be glorified in the reading of it today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to start with Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty king, lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Old Testament prophecy today comes from Micah, chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I must bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he takes my side and executes, executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I shall see his vindication. Then my enemy will see and shame will cover her who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Now she will be trodden down like the mire of the streets. A day for the building of your walls. In that day, the boundaries shall be far extended. In that day, they will come to you from Assyria to Egypt and from Egypt to the river, from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. But the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants for the fruit of their doings. Shepherd your people with your staff, a flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest. In the midst of a garden land, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt. Show us marvelous things. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. 
But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And back to our Psalm, Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turned back, they stumbled and perished before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemies have vanished in everlasting ruins. Their cities you have rooted out. Their very, the very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble, and those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those you, who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death so that I may recount all your praises. And in the gates of daughter Zion, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they had hid. In the net that they hid has their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. And our final psalm today is Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. 
In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal processions with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. And I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Well, I know that we have a little time uh, today, and so I wonder if we should just maybe look at uh, the Acts passage and the John passage, just to kind of look at those two together. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the John passage, we have been spending a lot of time in John, especially through this, uh, through the Lent season, now that we're into Advent, but... Into um, Easter. And, sorry, into Easter. Uh, right. I was like, where are we? You just really? jumped us right I to just, the end. You know, I kind of want to take a nap and just kind of wake <laughs> right. up maybe in Advent, right? right? It's been really busy. Uh, but... Um, a lot of what the daily lectionary does is it reinforces those things that have been coming before on the Sunday readings. And right. so this concept of uh, jumping back to John, but clearly this is a pre-crucifixion, -re pre resurrection aspect. It's John 15. Right. Uh, and Jesus is talking about it, making this making this analogy, or not even a metaphor, right? I am the vine, mm -hmm. the true vine. And, and you are the branches. There's this whole concept then of how do we abide in Jesus, how do we remain in him, that we would do the work that, that uh, Jesus is calling us to do. Uh, we know that post-resurrection, Jesus is telling, tells Mary to go and tell the disciples. Okay. Uh, Jesus then tells the disciples, just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so this whole idea of uh, everything that we do, even all of the things that we've been sent to do, this is not a replacement of Jesus. This is a fulfillment of the things that Jesus is enabling us to do, empowering us to do, and we can do right. none of these things apart from being attached to him, the true vine. Mm -hmm. um, but then when we are attached to Jesus, the true vine, we will be able to bear fruit and do the good work that he's called us to do. Right. Um, and so, if you jump over to Acts, mm -hmm. what is it that Peter and John do? They heal. Speak healing. They, right. they speak healing. Um, and it's great. There's that whole line about, well, uh, they, they look at the guy. The guy's sitting there thinking, hey, look, I'm going to get a handout. I'm right. going to get silver. I'm going to get some gold. And what does he say? Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Um, Peter and John are not saying, hey, I can do these things of my own power, my own authority, my own anything. It's all about abiding in Jesus, staying with him, and then doing the things that Jesus has done. Right. Um, right. So, um, and that's where even sometimes confusing passages from Micah, we're just like, well, that was a little confusing. Right. I might have to go back and reread that and go, <laughs> right. read that in oh, I don't know, I'm going to go read that again. It's like, on. what's going on with these yes. things? Um, prophets can be regularly uh, confusing, and that's okay. Right. That's okay. I think they deserve a little bit more study than to me to make a comment on the Micah passage right now. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, I think I, that's fair. Okay, is that fair? It's like, right. Well, <laughs> right. well, let's just stick with let's stick with John, and we'll stick with Acts. Um, well, even John, and we stopped at verse eleven. But if you go on to verse twelve, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And so, just putting that into the the context of what you've just read, you know, I am the true vine, and we we have this connection, and that everything that we are able to do is through that connection with him and then the father has the role as the vine grower so there's a role there as well but and then for it to come down um if you keep my commandments you'll abide in my love just as i've kept my father's commandments and and then this is what the commandment is that you love one another as if i have loved you and i think that that is um you know and we say it all the time but you know we are connected we've got this relationship with christ and then we have this relationship with one another and um but truly in order to stay connected to christ there is you can't have one without the mm-hmm. other um people will you know well, I'm, I'm right with god but you know everybody in the world may hate me but i'm right with god well it doesn't work that way mm-hmm. um we we can't have one without the other we can't be connected to jesus and disregard everything around us right. um and so as we are connected to him as we do abide in him i think that that then allows us to have those those relationships with one another um, and to love one another. And like I said, you, you can't have one and not have the other. They have to both be in place. Mm. Right, because wouldn't it be interesting if, uh, you know, Jesus had said, um, you know, love, uh, you know, no commandment I give you greater than this, right? You know, that, that you love yourself, like, right. really strongly. <laughs> I think we all have that we, figured out. Right. I'm, I'm, Truth be told, I think we probably have that figured out too well sometimes. Maybe so. Um, Thinking too much about myself and not enough mm-hmm. about other people. That oh, I, I must I must have everything I want because clearly what I want must be the best because I want it. You know, right. as opposed to how can we love as Christ has loved us? How do we mm-hmm. how do we serve other people even when it's not fun to serve them? How do we sacrifice for other people even when it's certainly not fun to to sacrifice um, right. but if we think about if if all of us who call ourselves Christians recognize uh, that we are by definition prior to Christ unlovable sinful people mm-hmm. and Jesus still loved us enough to die for us right. um, and if we're called to love as Christ has loved others there's not there's not a st- there's not a well, we have to wait until you get your act cleaned up before I love you. Right. In fact, sometimes loving somebody in the midst of them trying to clean up their act is probably exactly what they need. You know, right. I'm not saying there should never be consequences for bad behavior because there should always right. be and truth and being told. There's a difference between love and enabling. There's, you know, truth needs to be told. Uh, boundaries need to be set. There's, uh, you know, we we even in loving ourselves, we don't love ourselves unto harm, you know, because that's not loving. Right. We do need to take care of ourselves. Therefore, we do need to take care of others and at Mm -hmm. least have them. Um, But again, it's, it's loving people that are unlovable. It's, it's loving people as Christ loved us. And then as we've been transformed by this love, we need to um, wait for and be expectant of that God will love them through us. Right. And be transformative of them in their lives. Right. And that love, you know, when we love people, especially when it may be somebody that is unlovable or, or things that are difficult or whatever, um, when we love them the way that Christ loved us, you know, they may not know. Mm-hmm. They don't know Christ. So when they see that joy and that compassion and that love, when they see that in someone being extended to them and they say, well, what's going on here? You know, that is an opportunity then to then invite them into um, the family of Christ, into the body of Christ, which that invitation is extended to everyone. But we, someone still has to, whether that's a parent taking a child to church, whether that's an adult neighbor inviting another neighbor, you have to be told there, there is this invitational component there. And so in loving others, um, especially loving those who may not know Christ, that love opens the door for the body of Christ to be, um, to grow. All right. I think you're spot on. Spot on with that. Um, I would encourage all of you to go back and reread Psalm 118, all these, uh, uh, verses that 
jump out at us familiar mm -hmm. verses how many how many familiar verses can you pack into one into psalm one. there yes. uh, his steadfast love endures forever this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord the lord is my strength and my might he has become my salvation uh, if you're looking for a psalm that you can memorize, famous, uh, famous uh, verses, and well things that well-known verses, things that should uh, encourage us in the midst of maybe difficult times, go back and read Psalm 118 and recognize that it's the God, it's God who does all of these good things in our life, um, and uh, and He is the one that even enables us to abide in Him. And right. So as we think about how Jesus holds on to those that are His. Um, that we respond in gratitude and grace and, and, and yeah, gratefulness for that. So, right. uh, okay, I think that's probably good for I today. I think that's good. All right. All right. Well, why don't I close us in a word of prayer? Okay. You. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for our um, opportunity to read these words today and to share in this time with you. And I pray that we do lean in and that we do look to you and take refuge in you and that we do abide in you and in in that that we feel encouraged and loved so that we can go out into the world and we can share that with others around us and that we can speak truth and that we can speak um, praise to you that your kingdom can be furthered um, through the things that you call us and invite us into in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We look forward to the next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.